Nigeria is a country of a lot of energy. If there's something I miss when I'm not in Nigeria, it's just that energy. You, you, can't, you can't find it anywhere else. And I say that this as a Nigerian who is sometimes critical of Nigeria. And with that energy comes a lot of imagination and a lot of potential to make change happen. When you think, for example, about Nollywood. Action. And how rapidly the country made progress with mobile connectivity. I mean, these are examples that sort of show you that things are possible in Nigeria. One of the central core themes of this report that we are trying to encourage the country to think in terms of one nation, one health. Gather two or three Nigerians in a space and we have a very sophisticated analysis of what is wrong with Nigeria. But on the other hand, there are lots of things that have actually worked in Nigeria and we almost brush them aside and don't pay attention to it. We eradicated wild polio in 2020. Guinea worm disease went from 650,000 cases in 1988 to zero today. And we crushed the deadly 2014 Ebola outbreak in 93 days. But when you also compare Nigeria to other African countries, one of the things that immediately strikes you is how relatively worse it performs on health compared to its neighbors and compared to even countries that have less GDP, for example, than Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, yet the UN estimates life expectancy to be around 55 years old. The proportion of government spending on health was 4.6% in 2017, lower than the African average of 7.2 and the world average of 10.3. There is a lot of skepticism around, you know, is universal health coverage possible in Nigeria? Where the fear of universal health coverage dissipates is when you think about the cost of not having it, which is really the cost we're bearing now. Childhood diarrhea is a good example of everything that's wrong and everything that can be put right. Children who are exposed to repeated and protracted diarrhea the amount of nutrients that you've lost with all that water is significant and could affect you for the rest of your life. They grow slower, sometimes become malnourished. They may have shortfalls in school, and this will impact their earning potential for the rest of their lives. Nigeria loses a lot by not investing in its people. And the way you invest in your people really is to invest in their health. As they say, health is wealth. Putting a lot of resources into health also means that Nigeria can capitalize on its vast human capital to generate the kinds of progress that it really wants into the future. By tapping into our free mobile connectivity, we could move from paper health records to digital records and advance towards targeted diagnosis and treatment of diseases. Data is really important in the delivery of healthcare particularly when you don't have a lot of resources. Data tells you where there's a need. When you try something out, when you try to implement something, data tells you whether it's having impact or not. So I think we're at a point now where we can actually harness these new innovations and use them in a cost-effective way to improve our health system. Sometimes I have people telling me that, well, because we're in Nigeria, we should be doing, for example, only implementation research, taking innovations that are made elsewhere and trying them out to see if they work in our setting. But I tell them, we also do discovery. I have the strongest students you can find anywhere in the world. They're really creative, they're really strong. Given the resources they need, they could really change the innovation space. Not having Nigeria and Nigerians on the table is missing that kind of energy and that kind of imagination. It's like not having a country like the United States, you know, for all its good and its ills. It's a heavily culturally influential country. And if Nigeria gets something right, a lot of the continent will get it right. One of the things Nigeria lacks fundamentally, and has lacked for a very long time, but has perhaps never had, is a deep sense of social contract between those who run the country and its citizens. 
And I don't think there's a better way to build that social contract than in the theater or avenue of health. Very often, the way in which we've imagined health is in terms of buildings and structures that are often very foreign or very distant or very much unlike what people are used to. Growing up in a small town with a midwife for a mother who had a pro bono community practice, one of the things that I grew up with was the idea of health and healthcare as a kind of joy-inspiring experience. Antenatal care sessions with, with pregnant women who would sing and pray and joke and maybe dance and clap. And it was for me just a, a kind of a spectacle of joy. And I'm often reminded now the dominant imagination of a health or healthcare environment is not one of joy. If we could construct primary healthcare systems that are very well aligned with our local realities, that we will think of health and healthcare in a different way. The health aspiration in Nigeria is not impossible. It's actually doable. There are lots of things that could be done that we know Nigeria can't afford. We didn't put them in the report. So there is a way for Nigerians to be healthier. And I hope people can take that away and, and use that with our optimism to actually build a better and healthier Nigeria. I want people to feel that it is something owed to them by the government. Because you don't begin to make demands without a sense that you are owed the thing that you are demanding. A huge part of healthcare is just maintaining health in people who are healthy. And some of that is led by other parts of society, the environment, agriculture, engineering, being able to get children the proper nutrients, water, sanitation, simple hygienic practices, immunization. These are all part of healthcare. Here's what is possible. Are we willing to line up behind that vision? Because if Nigeria were to do that, to agree to a national vision on health, um, it's unimaginable the extent to which the success could be. When I think about this through, my imagination is that this could be the beginning of what Nigeria could be, really. <laughs>